So we're here at Eurobike. I was contemplating whether or not we were going to go this year because of COVID and everything like that. I'm excited that we made it. It was a little bit challenging getting over here, but... Tara just got here. We got a mad rush to try to make the plane. Made a slight mistake with my booking, trying to fix that. There's a potential strike. We might get stuck here or in Iceland. Hopefully we make it. What do you think, Tara? I think we're going to make it. How long have you been on hold for? Hour and 15 minutes. Oh my God, maybe we won't make it. I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it. Okay, new update. We also learned that our bags might be too big. I'm stuck on her luggage, Asia. <laughs> You asked me to help. These are all the clothes in my life. Hopefully, they don't go away. You can check it. I'm gonna put my faith in you. See what happens. Okay, they got some options. I'm being forced to be healthy. Are you looking at their sugar in your cookie? No, walnuts. All these people with allergies, man, <laughs> I tell you. Thank you for keeping us safe. All right, no problem. Jeremiah, where are you from, Jeremiah? I'm from Liberia. Liberia? Sure. Wow, all right, all right. Yeah, have a safe flight, all right? Thanks, Jeremiah. We made it. All right. We did. A little bit of sleep. You sleep now? <laughs> <laughs> this bike is heavy. A little detour on the way to Friedrichshafen. Check out the Rhine Falls. How do you say that? Friedrichshafen. Friedrichshafen? Something like that. Friedrichshafen. Friedrichshafen. <laughs> I have no idea. Where I don't know if we'll ever really survive staying in <laughs> Germany. We might be slightly out of breath. I'm in shape. <laughs> But this show has always been really important to me. I started coming in in 2013 and being here and being able to see maybe the future of, you know, what's going on, some of the developments and some of the more niche areas. A lot of the vendors that we work with or that we usually see here haven't really made it. It's difficult to put on a big show like this during these times, but I felt like it's still worthwhile to come and see some of the new innovations. And a lot of times some of the smaller players we might be able to get to see them just starting out. These are the opportunities for these type of smaller companies to kind of put themselves on the map, if you will. So we're starting outside in the demo area. We got our little bracelets. It means we signed our life away and we're ready to test some bikes. So this is day one of Eurobike. It's September 1st. I think it's September 1st. Yeah, September 1st. <laughs> you see all types of bikes out here. We got Enviolo over here showing off their transmission. I think they've really been pushing the automatic transmission a lot more lately. I don't know if you guys know Seth from Electric. Seth from everything, really. Oh, this electric, really. but also... Of course I know electric. Nine to five Mac, all those different things, but made it out. Yeah. Great. So, Micah, what's up? How's it going, Chris? How's it going? Good to hey, see you. You too. Are you in the States or you're in Israel or...? I'm everywhere. You're everywhere. You Are you like immune to jet lag at this point or...? I'm just constantly <laughs> in it. I gotta say, check out Electric, great content. So you're doing a lot of the video stuff. You're, you're kind of more behind the scenes, running the operations of like all sorts of websites. But it's always great bumping into yeah, you guys totally. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, all different types of brands. A lot of stuff you might not necessarily see in the States. It might not ever make its way to the States. We got some cargo bikes out here. Definitely a lot more developed here in Europe. We have a lot of cargo bikes actually in application in commercial settings. Seeing some of these four wheel setups, which is pretty cool. I'm hoping that we start to see more of them in the US, but part of the challenge is that some of the laws are not really too supportive of four wheel bicycles. They kind of separate that out. A lot of times bikes are defined as two or three wheels. So I'm hoping that we eventually see some changes in the law to allow more of that, because I think it is important for the future of cargo bikes, specifically in city environments and replacing vans and things like that. I don't know, what, what do you guys think about it? Do you think that we'll see more of that here? Not here, but in the US. A lot of times I'm looking at this, it's like, what's the future? What are we gonna see in the future? And I see some of those things that we don't see over there now. And I suspect that, that eventually we will. Another really big German brand, KTM. Most people probably know them for their motorcycles and dirt bikes. Not currently available in the US, but they previously were at one point. Uh, this is another product I'm really uh, always been pretty interested in. Tara and I got to check this out 2019 when they first uh, showcased in Eurobike. How are you? 
I'm fine. Good to see you. Good to so see you too. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Well, we were so excited two years ago to meet you at your bike, and we <laughs> said like, okay, when we meet Propel, then we have to keep going. You guys are experimenting with the new motor system this year. Yeah, I, I remember you were super excited last time about our Bosch engine. And I don't know, so I'm going to ask you again on camera, you a little pressure here. You know, maybe maybe 2022 we can make something happen. I don't know, we'll see. I think that's the goal. We okay. want to have especially have in certain markets like New York City, LA, yeah. San Francisco. You have an adapter system so you can clip on different options. And also flexibility within a company. We have a lot of customers who are now in the express grocery market. Customers buy online and you get it within 10 to 15 minutes right. uh, delivered. So we're definitely here to do some fun things and show you new fun innovations. But obviously I have business to conduct too. I'm also a store owner. I got my two stores, one in New York, one in California. And it's cool to be able to see these different products, connect with different manufacturers, see their viability in the US, where that's our focus right now. And we've done some different commercial stuff in the past. It's difficult because kind of got our hands full with just the normal consumer market, but I definitely see more and more growth in the future in that commercial market. Product like that is really quite nice. So that's a little known fact. Friedrich Schaffen is actually where the Zeppelin was first manufactured and invented effectively. Might at some point get to check out the Zeppelin Museum. These two are lucky. I've been there already. So I think you are the only American. Yeah, I think I'm the. It, huh? You could say I'm the. Hi. You could either say I'm the only American or the craziest American. <laughs> you are the one. But you remember I was the crazy American that came back to you in 2016 when you said, "Oh, this guy, I don't know." I actually came to you before that, and you said, "No, no, 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 no. We're, <laughs> we're not doing this. I want to come over to the factory. You guys are not taking visitors right now." But I thought you accept family, though, right? <laughs> you, 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 should, you should directly ask me then. Okay, okay. Then this is possible. If you want to come on, on whatever Friday. That's what happened in 2016 too, right? Remember that? I was here, we were taking a holiday after the show, and they said, oh, okay, I'm going to Italy. Yeah. They said, well, if you want to come on Tuesday or something like that. So I drove like 20 hours or, or 16 hours <laughs> from Italy to, to the Dutch show. Shot. Yeah, and then back. <laughs> I think that was a worthwhile trip. Yeah. And uh, it was a start for something great, I mean. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that was quite some memories there, for yeah. sure. Ready to go inside. <laughs> I can't hold my earbud out. Some interesting folding trike here. Sequel Lab, got some pretty cool saddles. We'll do a quick walk through here, just see what we can see, anything interesting to show you guys. Some lube. Electric assist foil bike. That's, um, Pretty cool. What do you guys think? Into that? I'd ride it. Not too much else exhibiting outside here. We already got a dinner invite, so that's nice. That's a plus. Need to carry a couple of bikes. Might have to get one of these. Put the show on the road. But uh, it can be a little bit challenging. It's like, where do we fit exactly as a retailer? You guys might spot this, this lady, this, this explorer over here with all her cameras and audio and stuff. This is Asia. You guys know Tara behind the camera. You've seen Asia before. It's just funny, we were just talking about her trying to run out of the camera and it's all good. We got this 360 oh, yeah. camera up here. Let's, let's turn it on. I think it's recording. I tell you, I, I really like the 360 camera, but not the most user-friendly. It's interesting, having been going to the show for several years, I see different exhibitors in different spaces. A lot of them are pushed up forward. All right, so I figured the best way to just do it is to start here in the beginning at A1. This is the first hall. A lot of e-bikes and kind of e-bike technology in this area. So we're just gonna do a quick walkthrough and check out what's going on. And future days, we'll probably have a little bit deeper video. So stay tuned for those. We'll do our best to include chapters at the bottom of the video in the description if you wanna click around and check out different sections of the video. So you can see they have all this kind of interesting tech handlebars with the integrated display. For myself as a retailer, it's really important that whatever we put out there, we know we can support long-term. You know, some of these innovative things, we kind of leave them to other retailers to put them out there, or test them, that sort of thing. And, you know, as we see their viability, they kind of prove themselves and I feel a little bit more comfortable offering them in our shop. But for the show, I just want to give you guys like the full view of 
what's going on here because I guess it's something that I feel like I'd be interested in. I hope you guys enjoy and let's check it out. You have some Asian manufacturers and it's interesting, some of these things you might end up seeing like pretty much the same product of these in the US, maybe under a different name and that sort of thing. Motor internals, stuff like that. And so you're making these e-bike parts, but are you also, I imagine, for auto manufacturers as well? Is this just a sector of the business? Yeah, it's a sector we have also sector. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So that's what's always interesting, to, to be able to get a deeper perspective on things, to be able to see the people behind the, these different companies, their parts, the internals. You end up seeing all these things at these shows. So for a lot of these big players in the e-bike space, it yeah. seems like a lot of them had some kind of parallel experience that they brought to this and then, you know, it works well. So a lot of automotive manufacturers coming into the space. Doesn't seem like there's too many that are just starting from scratch with no parallel experience, if you will. A lot of battery manufacturers, Greenway, pretty big from China. All sorts of different sizes and styles of batteries. So different OEMs, if they wanna create a different bike with different style batteries, they can do that. But it's interesting, when I started coming here in 2013, I was always impressed by how many electric bikes I would see. I was going to the Interbike show as well in the US, which is no longer around. It was such a small percentage, but here it's just, oftentimes I found more electric bikes than non-electric bikes at the show, which is kind of interesting. This show is intended to represent the bicycle market in general. I think maybe something like that would work well in a uh, commercial setting, maybe like a warehouse. You need to just tote some stuff around. E-bikes made in Turkey. That's a first. I haven't heard of too many products coming from Turkey, but these, these days there's a lot of brands. They got to consider where their sources are with the logistics. A lot of this stuff is really broken down. so figuring out how all that works together. I kind of feel like this might be the, the, the future on some level, like these kind of covered bikes. It's interesting if you look at some of the economics around like these pedicabs, a lot of times the, the driver can't afford too much, but if you have a lot of this advertising space and it's presentable in a way that could be interesting to an advertiser, then it creates a different economy, a different financial opportunity that maybe the driver doesn't necessarily have to invest as much in the bike. I mean, one of the things I've spoken about previously is the idea of bus stations. So in New York City, most of the bus stations were actually financed by outside companies. It wasn't actually built by the city. They had a private company that sold advertising on the space and they said, hey, I'll put the bus station in if you allow me to advertise on it. For the city, it's a great deal. They say, hey, no capital investment up front. And for the advertiser that's building them, you say, okay, I'm gonna invest some money up front, but long term, I have this revenue stream. It's all about how these things work and, and, and how can you actually viably get these things into the market and working. I'm starting to see more of these like mashups of motorcycle parts, like these tires are more like a motorcycle tire. The rims, the, these are motorcycle brakes on here. I mean, sometimes what you need for, for this type of application, I think intended to carry some five, 600 pounds. So the interesting thing, it's like pretty much you can have a little cafe table on a bike and maybe skirt some of the normal rules around having a cafe outside your restaurant. But Urban Arrow, this company, uh, Cool Blue, is a company kind of similar to Amazon in some ways in the Netherlands. I'm not as familiar. I know some people from the Netherlands. You can kind of maybe explain that to some extent in the comments. But old friend Henning. Hello, my friend. What's up, buddy? Chris. Good how to are see you? you. Good. How Good about to you? See you, man. There was some like rumblings going on. You know, shortly we got the news that you guys that Urban Arrow yeah. was acquired by Pond. Pon, a very large group, historically very big in the automotive space, but really been going hard in the mobility and, and biking and stuff like that. And Let me show you something that we have documented. Let's, let's see it, let's see okay, it. Okay, just a quick break, I have to grab something. Okay, and I got my, my new shoes. These were a gift uh, from the Propel team. Still got a fresh string on there, but uh, very Californian, you know, tie-dye shirt and this and that, so. We have made a book. Yeah. Drive change a decade of e-cargo bikes. Ten years of Arrow, we even have New York City in the book. I think I know I think I know this family here. Meet the Queen. I of love Holland. It. 
This is our 10 year anniversary uh, model. The first model was silver coated, which uh, made it to production only in the first year and then it went to black and white like you know it. This is looking back for 10 years of the Urban Arrow family. The new model is all over new features. <laughs> so this is the founder of Urban Arrow here. Awesome job, congratulations. Thank You're you. amazing. We're very grateful to be working with you. Good stuff all around. And there's awesome. a French guy who is dealer from the very first beginning in France as well. And I know you're from New York. I, yeah. I am, yes. Uh, Nicola. Because, because I follow Cargo Bike Mama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true, that's true. Mama. I'm hungry for a sweet ride. Wow. Does so that mean I can't so take a chocolate I'm bar? What happens? Okay. I make an exception for you. Guess how many will fit in there and take one with you. 468. Not even close. But oh, is this is, Dutch chocolate? Tonus Chocolonely uh, is, uh, is an initiative for slave free chocolate. Tara, probably you want dark? Let us all tolerate that. <laughs> you take an additional one back home. Okay, comment for the chocolate bar and I'll, I'll send you a chocolate bar. Tell me why, tell me why you deserve a, a, a Tony Chocolonely chocolate bar. I, I, I'll bring a couple for you. And we'll just continue through the booth here. More cargo bikes. This is a big deal, the containerization, swapping from one bike, swapping from a van or a truck onto a bike, having all these things. This is uh, one of the challenges to kind of contend with for the future of cargo bikes for a commercial application. The way it generally works is you're moving either from a retail or you're moving from a distribution center. Sometimes they're using a van or a truck to transport multiple containers and then they put individual containers onto a bike. That's how it works. So, but again, you know, the boxes, it's a, it's a big deal. It's a big, big part of it for sure. What's that? You're a colleague of mine. Yes? I'm from the Ladevan. I don't know if you heard of my channel. Are you filming each other now? We are, we are. <laughs> Be safe, guys. Oh, look at it. Both, oh, rolling interview. This is a next level rolling interview. Bye, guys. A few years ago, when I first started coming to this show, people would just say, ah, yeah, the American market is too small. We're not interested. Too much work. You guys sue too much. And now it's growing, it's becoming more interesting. Um, you know what? I think we should break for lunch and we'll finish the rest of this after. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Leave it to me to break stuff. Getting food? Talk to them, Tara. Hi. Hello, everybody. I need, like, just an arm massage. Tara's, <laughs> Tara's really <laughs> working on those. <laughs> Okay, you no, ride no, bikes. She rock climbs. No, okay, my arm hurts so bad. She rock climbs. She rides bikes. I have weak arms. I have really weak arms. I use more Whoever balance. loses buys lunch. One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> it's not bad. That Listen, was... you want good muscles. You know, just carry the camera all day so and sorry. climb rocks. All right. <laughs> that was not bad. She held out a little bit. Don't don't forget. If you want a chocolate bar, I, you're gonna get four. Chocolate. You're gonna get four if you comment ready or not when I come. All right. Also brought some sure. This is a special German drink. Waiter service is here. Schnitzel. This is sauerkraut. I would not call this coleslaw, but uh, somebody might. Potato salad with with chives. I have a chicken for for Tara with pumfrits. Some currywurst for the lady. Cheers, everybody. Eurobike. Woo! Big on meat, big on barbecue. It Texas, is, is well known for. <gasps> God, it's it's cool. safe. I'm still good. I'm trying to teach a lesson over here, you guys. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try some shore. I've had the apple shore before. Shore, shore. <laughs> what do you think you're gonna drink apple juice? It's a little bit like a sparkling Ooh. cider, though. Cider is made from apples, oftentimes, right? Okay, like, coleslaw. <laughs> It smells like Martinelli's. Like a sparkling apple cider? Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Do you know apple, uh, ciders <laughs> no. from apples? <laughs> no. All right. Now back to the show.
All right. I think we're gonna try to finish out that tall A1. A lot to cover, even though the show is a little bit smaller. Still a lot going on. And... All right. <laughs> they got this interesting looking cargo. I don't, I don't even call it a cargo bike, cargo motorcycle. It's a lot of these things interesting. It's just about how they fit in like the regulatory landscape because it's kind of a, a scooter that can carry cargo. It's also interesting to see all these different engineering, manufacturing firms get into the e-bike space. It seems like everybody wants to have their, their piece there. Whether they're gonna be successful long-term, it's difficult to say, but what else we got? It's my bike, another tracking device, the more of a traditional uh, GPS tracker, more batteries a frame manufacturer. If you go to any of the uh, Asian uh, bike shows, you end up seeing a lot more of this sort of stuff. Like I went to the Taipei bike show, and you see a lot more frame manufacturers. You see a little bit of that here, but looks like some cycling glasses that give you a little perspective of what's behind you. You wanna try them on? Let's see what happens here. All right. Is it a little mirror? You can adjust it by your finger, so it... Ah, okay. What do you think? It's a new look for me, it's good? Oh boy, all right. Ah, I can see you, I can see you now. Don't get too close now. Pretty cool. It's more for spying, it's more for... Visibility. For visibility backwards when you are biking. This is a bit more feminine. This is for you, the sound lady. Okay, all right, you just want me. Thank you. And you can adjust the mirror with your finger. With this finger? <laughs> Always some interesting things, it's fun. You never know. I mean, we're, we're moving right along through this thing. Oh, this is cool. This is like a, a testing machine. You guys might be wondering, like, how do these e-bikes get tested? So they, they can run this through many thousands of miles. Somebody doesn't have to subject themselves to that. And they can get all the data up on the, the system as to what they subjected it to. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool, I think. Uh, those things will become more and more popular and more and more necessary, perhaps. Some interesting trailers. That's one thing, you know, a lot of times people are looking at, you know, just cargo bikes, but there's a lot of opportunities with trailers and they seem to have some interesting innovations here. These things are pretty interesting. They steer in the, in the back. I like the design and, and I guess it allows it to be relatively compact as well. And this is an urban bike. This yeah. is for the urban life. This is not a commuter bike. So it's for sure made for cities like you want to go there, there's not too much space. It's perhaps one of the narrowest three wheelers. Yeah. Six centimeters wide. It turns here so you can turn just small circles, get around everywhere. You can try it if you want. Move our way over to the next. Oh, this is interesting. Another four wheel bike, four wheel cargo bike with leaf spring suspension. Full carbon fiber. Uh, the front is uh, always the same. The rear part is changeable. You can put um, yes. the box uh, or uh, the windshield, yeah. the rooftop. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate You're it. All right. ah. Come and visit us at the startup area. Oh. Got the special invite. What's up, bud? How are you? Good, good. Good to see you. Yeah. Surprised to see me here? <laughs> and that and so that becomes the hitch wow so basically this will attach to the bike and then you can flip it to to become the third wheel to become to be able to to transport it hello Propel for united states you know me all right sure i know you very well yes yes okay well i'm a friend i haven't met yet What's your name? Stefano from Italy. Stefano, very nice to meet you. So I don't know you, but I'm somewhat familiar with the bike. And one of the things you may or may not know about me is I, I'm, I'm very big with the Bosch system. And, and, yes, and yes. I know you've historically been with Shimano, and I, yes, I, I yes. like it, but, but I'm you know, a bigger fan of this, so it's interesting to see. Easy to handle and easy to carry kids and stuff. Sure. We developed our big front rack. Uh, we have uh, the small uh, front rack uh, suitable for the, all the rack time parts. This is, this is something you don't see too much. What, what, what size kit is this good for? Four to... Six. Four to six, somewhere in that area? Yes, okay. it depends on the size of the kit. Okay. This is the thing where it's starting to blur that line between bicycle and motorcycle and pickup truck and I don't know. But nonetheless, 
Change is coming. Better start getting comfortable with it. Let's go check out the next hall. They call it a hall.